Hi, thanks for tuning in. My name is Brandon Keenan, and I am here with Jeff Patton, who is a sports curator of this incredible museum known as the Baseball Card Castle. All right, Jeff, so we're just gonna get rolling right into this. Let's go. Um, <laughs> I've obviously been coming here now since we moved and love this store. I have to ask, so as soon as I walked into the room, how, how did this place come to be? How long have you been here? Well, you know, what, what, what goes into this? How did this start? It's literally one brick at a time. We've been in Cranberry for 33 years. I was fortunate enough to open this place May 11th, 1990, the day after my wife and I graduated from college. We had started previous to that. I started selling things when I was a teenager, never to make money. I sold things so that I could get more things. I remember thinking, man, if I bought 10 and sold eight, I could have two. And then I said to myself, if I bought 100 and sold 80, I could have 20. And my family used to chide me because I didn't take, I worked all the time, I never took money. I just wanted more stuff. And then life kicks in and you realize you got to pay a mortgage so that at some point we started to do it for a living. But the genesis really was just to acquire more stuff. And the thing that really kicked us off, when I was a senior in high school, I bought 10,000 Barry Bonds rookie cards with my high school graduation money. So I took the proceeds as I sold those off and started the seedlings for what is now Baseball Card Castle. So, okay, I, to elaborate on, 10,000 yep. Barry Bonds. Qu quarter a piece. Where does one come across? Everywhere ten? in the country. They, back in the day, before there were so many different cards, the idea was to get a 100-card lot of somebody's rookie because there was only so many different products. Now there's a million products. Back then, there was just Top Stoners and Fleer. So the idea was to get more of almost like shares of stock, so I would pick them up 100 here and 500 there and 200 here. And ironically, I spent my high school graduation money. My mother was hanging my shirts in my closet and she said, what's all this? And I said, uh, 10,000 Barry Bonds tops rookies. And she said, where did you get those? I said, I bought them. <laughs> and she said, how much? I said, uh, 2,500 bucks. I'm a senior, or uh, I just graduated from high school, right? Two weeks away from going to college. She's like, where did you get that kind of money? I said, I used my graduation money. It seemed perfectly logical to me. So I was going away to college, and I spent every penny I had on Barry Bonds rookies. So, so how long did it take you to move that many rookie cards? Uh, back then, you used to sell them in chunks of 100 because other people wanted 100. So not as long as you would think. Probably had them a year and a half, two years. You know, 100 here and 200 there. But everything's different economically right the magnitude of a quarter then is nothing now but to get a hundred of them for 25 dollars and sell a hundred of them for 60 bucks is doubling your money is doubling your money right? right like so i took that money and again never never one iota of thought that it would be money it was it was more leverage to get the next thing. Well, what version of rookie card was it? It was the 86 tops traded. Okay. That was okay. the one. Yeah. Okay. You couldn't get that many of the FLIR cards. The FLIR was the good one then, but there was no mechanism in order to get quantity of those. Tops, they sold those, long story short, they sold these in cases of 100 sets so people would break them down and sell 100 of each guy. Well, I was buying all the bonds as I could find everywhere across the country. So that was, that was the beginning of it. Yeah, my sister and I, we, we collected baseball cards as kids, and uh, that we, we did have just one uh, between the two of us. We yeah. had to get our hands, and it was from a baseball card shop um, that it was in Derry. Uh, my cousin and I would always frequent it all the time. And I think maybe that was part of when I walked in here that I really, really liked is it just brought me right back to when I was a kid. And, you know, going to the guy with, you know, seeing all these kinds of displays and stuff and going to him with what we had. And he would make us offers. And we, at the time, it was we thought that our, our stuff was too cool and we couldn't right. sell our stuff. We yeah. had to hang on to it. But, but isn't that sort of the beauty of this, right? Like there's, I, I use this phrase all the time and it's not really, it, it's an assessment of human nature, right? Like you, how do you put a price on sentiment? Some people there's zero sentiment and other people there's like, I'm, I'll never get rid of that. And that, that's one of the cool features I like about this is people's, passion for their items you know right and i've purchased 
multiple things, uh, and I will take that to the grave. Um, there are. I hear that a lot of times. There are. I mean, I, I've got two goalie sticks now. I mean, there's there's so much stuff here that is unique and and interesting that every time I come in here, it is constantly rotating. Even today, seeing the T.J. Watt framed up uh, signed jersey, how. How does a rotation like that just keep happening? Like, get, give me a little insight as to how you do this. Well, after 33 years, and you hope it's because you have a reputation of treating people fairly, we get upwards to 200 people a week come through the front door to sell me stuff. Sometimes there's a line of people waiting to sell things uh, for di different reasons. Some people are downsizing, whatever. And if you treat people fairly, you get a continual flow of things coming in, right? Because you you think about it, it, stuff does recycle itself. So someone dies and they, they sell their whole estate and then it gets parceled up. And my job, I feel like, is a little bit of a curator, right? Because at, at the heart of any business, you have to pay your bills at the end of the month, that's clear. However, that's not really my passion. My passion is, this is my stuff, right? Like, this is my collection, right? People ask me that all the time, do you collect stuff? I'm like, I bought all this. You know, I love all, everything I bought, I love. So I take great, lengths at making sure this is like my living room right like so just like you want your living room to be clean and neat and organized and be able to see things in a functional sense that's how i look at this and i get great pleasure out of moving things around and having new displays and i one of the things i work against is a lot of antique shops or businesses that have been around for a long time that sell knickknacks or memorabilia one of the knocks they get is that they never move their merchandise, that it's dusty or dark. And that's, to me, the great enemy, right? I want things to be seasonal. When you walk in here, it's a lot of black and gold because clearly 90% of my customers love black and gold. Now, it doesn't mean we don't have a ton of things pertaining to other teams, but they're, per they're, they're not nearly as prominently displayed because I want black and gold to hit you in the face when you walk in. So organization's huge to me. I'm a little OCD in the sense that I like things to look a certain way, um, but that's, to me, the fun of it. I've been doing this 33 years. I've never had one day where I didn't want to come to work. So I have days I want to go home because you're tired, you know, or whatever, but I look forward to every day coming in and resetting things and filling in holes and sprucing the place up. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm um, just just being here in, in, in the fields, I, I get where you're coming from and I see what you what you mean there. And I'm pretty sure that almost everybody that walks in the door here, they, they feel that part of it. They I hope so. To. They absolutely do. Yeah, because that's what we're driven towards is um, the ancillary value to this is to see a grandma and a grandson go like, oh, you should have seen how great Willie Stargell was. To me, that's the – I love sports, right? Like, so some people are in this because they like money and they don't mind sports. I love sports, and so it's residual for me. And – one of the great pleasures is to hear families or friends discuss the Immaculate Reception or whatever is depicted here. That's to me, is one of the interesting things about it. Yeah, I mean, I, even over Christmas, I purchased um, a Forbes Field, um, like a, a small diorama set, I guess you could. I'm not even sure what, exactly what you call them, but um, I purchased it for my grandfather. And it was specifically because my grandfather told me about him going to the last game at Forbes Field and being able to watch that. And, you know, giving that to him. I mean, it had a lot of sentimental value right. for me to give that to him. Correct. Because um, he likes, he doesn't like big, big elaborate things. He likes small stuff like mm -hmm. that. And I, I think he really did appreciate that. And I'm sure that, he did. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it goes a long way. And I'm sure many, many other people have come in and out of here and done the exact same thing. This is certainly not to disparage any other business of any kind. But that's the backdrop to here is that I hope that people not only leave here with merchandise, but with rekindled memories. You know, that's... Right. That's the part Absolutely. I enjoy. Absolutely. So I, I have some, uh, obviously, a laundry list of questions. Um, one of my biggest questions is what has been the holy grail to come in here or you feel is the top piece to come in here and come out of here? If you, Boy, if you could name one. If I can name one, can I name two? You can name two. You yeah. can name as many as you want. <laughs> we had at one point a game used 1968. Joe Namath Jets jersey with a pair of matching white Puma spikes that he assigned Joe Willie Namath on the heel. Obviously, Namath's from Beaver Falls, so a lot of the memorabilia that pertains to his career comes out of this part of the world. 
that was a really cool piece. And I also had a Michael Jordan game used jersey from 1991 at one point. There, and there's, there's thousands of them. I mean, I literally, Clemente game used bats, um, cards, all of them, yeah. you know. But you wish you could have them back, but at the same token, it, Placing it, I, like I don't like to call it selling it. I like to call it placing it, like because if I sell you something that I know you're gonna keep and you cherish until the grave, as you say, then that's a, a benefit to me, right? Like more than just selling an ice cream cone where somebody consumes it and it's over. This is like something that when you look back at that thing hanging on your wall, you get a rekindled memory. That's the part I like about it. Yep. Just in all of the stuff that I have purchased here and have um, in my man cave, every time I, I look at them, you know, I, I purchased the, the Tom Barrasso stick that is signed by Patrick Willeem, Tom Barrasso, Ken Reggett. And those three signatures might not mean as much to someone else, but to me, growing up as a kid, yeah. as a goalie, uh, I idolized those three. Exactly. To have that all on one stick. And I walked in the front door here that day and looked to the right, and there it was. It was like a light just shone right on it. Um, I will have that memory of when I walked in this door and purchased that stick that day um, for the rest of my life. Well, that's what we shoot for. And the thing that's funny, and I tell people this all the time, one of the common questions I get is people will say, well, what should I buy? I'm saying, buy what you like, yeah. right? Like if it's worth money in the future, that's tremendous. But I, I have a whole box of stuff in my house that probably only means something to me. But... In the course of doing this, I snag things, put them in my shirt pocket, I take them. I got a box in my game room that says Jeff's stuff, and I stick it in there, and once in a while on a rainy day, you pull it out, and you just I get a smile out of looking at it. It may not mean anything to anyone else, but that's not the, the important part. Right, right. So I'm going to skip into another question here. Um, you have a lot of athletes that seem to come and go from here and, and sign. Mm -hmm. um, how many athletes do you think you've had in and out of here? You know, what are we talking about? I mean, how often... And that's going to lead into my next question, yeah. by the way. But uh, Hundreds over 35 years. You know, we try to do, it's, we'll take one step back to articulate this properly, is it isn't really just about the raw autograph. What I feel like we're producing is that moment that you talk about in regards to the stick. So we bring a guy in here and, a little boy or little girl gets her picture taken with someone in my store. They go home and put it on Facebook. And hopefully 35 years from now, they were, you know, we've been doing this 35 years. So people will come in and say, I remember when I met so-and-so here. And it was a big deal to them. So it's, it's a lot, most times it's a losing proposition, right? But to me, it's a brand building deal. I want people to remember, hey, that's the place where I met Jack Lambert or I met Chris Letang, whoever it may be. Yeah. So that's the genesis of the thought there is to, again, instill memories into people, not just a product. Right, right. And it seems to be that's the, the common message with this store is it's more than just sports memorabilia. It's creating memories and yeah. creating, creating those moments, I guess, that you can remember for the rest of your life. You see, I was on the other side of those memories a lot of times, right? Before there was a place where you could go to grab those memories. Like there was no place like this when I was a kid. Right. So my my part of my dream was to be the curator of those dreams, right? Like is to have, not to overstate it, but like lots of people dig this stuff, right? Like lots of people like sports. And that's why we kind of expanded into memorabilia about 20 years ago because lots of people like sports. Not everybody collects cards. A good number of people do but everybody likes something cool hanging in their basement pertaining to their favorite team or player. So that's yeah. kind of the genesis of the expansion in the memorabilia. The other thing is just in the shore economics, it's hard to display a card 13 feet off the ground, right? So bigger three-dimensional items produce a backdrop that makes hopefully makes it intriguing to come in here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, just seeing... I mean, all of the packs and packs and packs of cards, just because we were just talking about baseball cards. Um, I, I've seen many times, and almost every single time I'm in here, kids that come in, um, and you work with them so well, and you really do give back to them and do a lot with them. In fact, that was probably 
one of the, the big things of us coming here was um, my girlfriend's uh, brother brings his kids in here and had mentioned, you know, how great you were working with them. Um, talk to me a little bit about the kids um, and, and when they come in and out of here. Um, I just feel like God's given me a blessing that I, I'm able to do what I enjoy doing. And no matter whether you sell golf clubs or baseball cards, whatever it is, I would hope that the charge in life would be to treat people as you would treat your family, right? Like, so this is an extension of my family, the people that come in here. That You'd be surprised how many people that started out as customers come to my son's wedding or graduation parties. Like, I look at it, at least I try to look at it as friend, friend, not business, business, right? Like, business is a backdrop, and I know that's probably a, a horrible way to, from a technical standpoint, to run a business, but I've just always been a believer in investing in people, not in the stuff. You know, if, if you have a rapport with someone, if you have a relationship with someone, you don't have to worry about whether the price is fair or whether the stuff is quality merchandise because if you're going to treat me like a human being, the rest of it falls into place. That's you just hope to be treated like you want to treat people. Your normal day-to-day -day operations. Mm -hmm. um, talk to me from you know the moment you walk in here. Who's helping you out? What do you have going on? I, I noticed that there is a, again, uh, just like the rotation of, of memorabilia, there's there's two to three of you always constantly working. Talk yeah, there, a there's a group that. of six or seven of us, primarily family and a couple of friends who are so much more than friends that they're part of the family. Um, I was blessed to literally start this with my wife, right? Like we were engaged at the time. We've been doing this since... We were teenagers, right? Like we did this all through college and um, I couldn't be blessed with a better wife. She's supportive. And I don't even really know if I could have pulled this off because part of day-to-day -day operations is it's every day. Like we're here six days a week for 30 years, right? That's, and I don't say that as, it's, as if it's laborious because when you enjoy what you're doing, it's great. But it is still a grind, right? Like retail is a grind. You're, you're here and if you're gonna do it correctly, you gotta be here. Right. Like that's part of the deal is you got to be here. So and, and that's not hard for me other than life. Right. Like and the fact that my father has been a tremendous blessing to me. Um, how cool is it to have this group of people that you love and can trust and don't ever have to worry about whether something's going to come up missing? Not only that, they care more about it than I do. Right. Like so they care about supporting me. And that's really what's made it possible, starting with my wife and going to my dad and my friends and family. It's um, hopefully that's reflected here also. Yeah, definitely. I, I think it is. I, I absolutely think it is. It's 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 just a great place to come to. It's a great place to hang well, out. My and, son and, started here like he was born in '96, so we were like in our fourth or fifth year here. And uh, I still have people come in and they'll say, "Where's the little boy that was in the bassinet?" <laughs> like he learned to walk by holding on to the the back of these cabinets, and. Uh, <laughs> Like I said, people we have people that are customers that have evolved into near family members that come to family functions with us, right? Like so, it's not just like I look and I, I literally tell people this: if I don't see somebody for a couple of weeks, I'll reach out to them and I go, you know, I'm reaching out to you because I care about you, not because you didn't come here to buy anything, right? Like so, it's this tricky balance between just because you come here to to patronize our business, I, I don't care about that. I care about people as people, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think uh, one of the questions, um, you, you said 30 years, right? Where, 33, yeah. 33 years. Where do you, what's the future? Day by day, that's it. Um, I really have never had an exit plan. This has been something I've always done. I imagine at some point I won't be able to physically stand on concrete for 12 hours a day in dress shoes. But... I just pray about that, and I feel like God will give me a, a direction when that time comes. We are happy to be in the middle of a new five-year lease, so for at least the next five years, Good. yeah, we'll be here. And, and as long as the Lord blesses me with the health to be able to, to do this day by day, we plan on being here. I, I say the future looks bright. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> All you got to do is just stay yeah. here. Just stay yeah. here. You know, it, seems, it seems like it just keeps working. So. That's the plan. Yeah. Um, you know, did you have any questions, you know, for, for me that we can talk about anything? I mean, as far as things that I've purchased that I've come in, I mean, I, I'm sure you probably don't remember exactly everything I've purchased. Oh, you'd be surprised. That's one of the things that I am um, pretty That's what's gonna lead, on. It's going to lead me into yeah, that. Yeah, um, I'm careful to, to bring that stuff up because one thing I do not 
like to do is I'm not a salesman, right? I'm a, I call myself an information giver. Like when you ask me a question about something, I'm more than glad to explain it to you. In fact, this is one little side note that, that piggybacks what you're saying is people ask me all the time over the 33 years, there's been different waves and iterations of things that are popular and we kind of stick, I do what I do, right? Like, cause I love sports and I'm not going to mention any of the other things that come and go, but people ask, well, do you have this, this, or this? And I don't. And I'll tell you the main reason why, if I don't have an interest in it, when you ask me a question about it, I almost feel like I'm lying if I'm just giving you a sales brochure. But when you ask me about a hockey stick that's signed by Barrasso Lalim, I watch those games. So I know when they use those sticks because that's of interest to me. Like I go home and I watch sports. That's why I do this. Uh, I, I've always been, it's been quizzical to me, the people that are into this who don't love sports, right? Like it seems like the cart before the horse to me. I'm in this because I love sports. So the same passion you have, maybe it's for me not the same item as you, but I can identify with the feeling that you have because I have those items in my house. Yeah, yeah. In the basement, I might add. <laughs> well, I, I, I might be getting some some flack for wearing a Blues jersey on this this um, you know interview, but the purpose was to to show that. These, it's not just Pittsburgh stuff. These are the kind of things, and I didn't purchase this here, but I did connect it in the same way in a sense that I got this jersey with the same kind of connection that I have when I walk in this door. Um, I saw this jersey as a kid, and the truth is, yes, you have lots of black and gold, but you have a lot of other things, a lot of yeah. other teams, and there's a lot that people can, yeah. can purchase here, um, be it cards, memorabilia. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to, you know ask you, uh, you know, what else you have outside of black and gold that is of big interest that people might not know about if they're uh, watching this. You name it. We just don't prominently display it in the front half of the store. We have Ted Williams autographs and Mickey Mantle autographs. Things that date clear back to the 20s and the 30s. I love sports, right? Like, I love the black and gold. Those are the teams I root for. One of the things I don't understand about sports is, to me, what makes it great is you can root for the Browns and I can root for the Steelers and that should be fun. It shouldn't be something that makes you a villain, correct? So I can support, at least I can step outside of my fandom for the Pittsburgh teams and understand that someone in Cleveland has the same affinity for Jim Brown as that we would for Franco Ayers. That makes total sense to me. So it would be very short-sighted on my part to neglect all the customers. Now, obviously, there's a marketing aspect to it. I have way more people that come in and ask about Franco Harris than Jim Brown. But at the same token, that doesn't mean I'm going to disparage somebody's love for Wilt Chamberlain or for Dr. J. Like, those were great players, and, and we support and also display that merchandise. We just do it in a different <laughs> section of the store. That's all. Absolutely, yeah. So people outside of the area here, um, online sales, shipping things out. Talk to me a little bit about that. Do you offer that? To Certainly. We ship things every day. There's a bucket full of things that are going to go out to Texas and Michigan that's going out this morning. So that happens all the time. It's ironic. And this just means I'm old, but we predate the Internet, right? Like, so there used to be a time where you had to wait for a magazine to be shipped to you and you'd order it out of a magazine. That was if you collected cards, there's a there was a publication called Sports Card Digest, Sports Collectors Digest in the 70s and 80s. And it would come in the mail and you'd tear through the thing, and that was a precursor to the internet, right? Like in, um, we always used to say that every card has a home, right? Like John Crux from Kaiser, West Virginia. People in Kaiser, West Virginia want John Crux. But in the 1980s, there was no internet that was a vessel by which I could connect with those people. So it was more work, it was more arduous to get that product to those people. I mean, I've had players' dads call me from Texas and say, do you have any of my son's cards? To me, that's one of the, the backdrops to the story is why is somebody interested in this? More than once, I've asked somebody. I was, they'll ask me for a player, and I'll say, I'll get it for you if you tell me why you're interested in it, right? Like, and you'd be surprised how many times it's, oh, that was my uncle's brother. Or that He was in the family. Rue Baudel lived on the same street we did when I was, you know, there's a million stories I could go over, and now the Internet has expedited like everything in life it, it it allows me to connect we have 20 million cards in this building right like so there's a home for every one of those cards it's a matter of crossing paths with the people that want those yeah so it's a um it's a big nut to crack 
in order to harness all that, but we, it's something we definitely do. One thing I've always felt anytime I walked in and out of here is it's always a fair deal. No matter what it is that you purchase, it's always fair. I've gone to so many of these sports shows and memorabilia shows and, and toy shows where you walk by and you're like, like it's just so far out of mm -hmm. my wheelhouse. You always seem to give people a fair deal every time they're here. Talk to me a little bit about that, and, and, and maybe it gets back to what we were discussing before, but I just kind of want to get your thoughts on that as, right. as, as you know, how, you've, how you've been able to do that and work with people. Well, I think of it this way. If, if my wife was walking in somewhere to buy something from me, I'd want her to be treated fairly. And, and fair doesn't necessarily, I, I go over this with people all the time, fair is what's good for both of us, right? Like not what's just good for me or what's just good for you. Fair is we both go, hey, that's cool. It doesn't mean it's the least expensive ever because we have a big footprint. I mean, it's, it's hard to, to crack the overhead nut. That being said, I'd rather sell lots of things at a fair price where you feel comfortable coming back and telling your brother that that's a place you should go. So it doesn't mean you're the cheapest on every single thing. It means that you, you know that people feel like, at least the hope is that every time they come here, they would get it a fair deal. Yeah. Jeff, I could sit here and talk with you for probably three, four straight hours. <laughs> well, I'd be glad to do that. <laughs> Maybe we'll do a part two segment to this. That would but, be awesome. Uh, it's, it has been an honor and a privilege to, to have this chance. Just like when you come in as a customer, you, now you're a friend, you're welcome here anytime. Uh, I appreciate that. I am sure that you will see a lot more of me uh, a, a, a over the next year. Just get on the right gear when you come <laughs> in the next time. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Take care. Appreciate it. Be sure to come down here to the Baseball Card Castle here in Cranberry, and I guarantee you're going to find something you're going to absolutely love. For more information on the Baseball Card Castle, go to BaseballCardCastle.net. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like and subscribe button. Stay tuned for more business reels powered by KVT Productions.